So let's talk about a particular event, and that's the DOM content loaded event. I, I told you that would become important to us, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. So here is a function called show message. Uh, when somebody calls show message, uh, it creates a message that says the DOM is ready and pops it up in an alert box. Okay, simple function. And then we're calling document.addEventListener DOM content loaded. So what are we doing? We're looking at the document and saying, hey, when that document, when the DOM content is loaded, I want you to run this function. And we'll use that quite often. We don't want most of our event listeners to happen before the page is loaded because the thing we're trying to attach it there may not be there or may not be processed yet. So a lot of times we add event listeners once the DOM content has been loaded. Uh, so now let's talk a little bit about anonymous functions as the event handler. So here we're doing the same thing that we did up here, down here. Uh, we're calling, we're looking at the document, add an event listener that's going to run when the DOM content is loaded. Okay. But in this case, instead of calling a different function, we're writing something called an anonymous function. So uh, we have a little function here, an arrow function, that does the same thing that the show message did, right? But it never has a name. We never named it. We never called show message. Instead of calling that function name show message, we wrote it right inside the parentheses uh, for the DOM content loaded event, which ends here. So DOM content loaded, comma, and then we wrote our function right inside and the function doesn't have a name, which is why it's called an anonymous function. It does the exact same thing that our named function had up here. Uh, so that's some shorthand that we use quite often. So let's look at some code here. It attaches a, a click event handler for a button when the DOM is loaded. So we have a function up here called process entries. Uh, and we're not even worried about what the code is right now. We just know when we call this, it's going to run some code to process some entries uh, in between these two curly braces. And then in the document, we're going to add event listener for DOM content loaded. And we're using an anonymous function here. And this anonymous function is going to go out and find the calculate button. And it's going to add an event listener to it uh, when somebody clicks on it that calls process entries. Okay, so the DOM content loaded event listeners. DOM content loaded is where we put a lot of the code to attach all of our different events and event listeners to each other. Uh, here is uh, slightly more uh, combination, uh, a more streamlined way. We're using an, an anonymous function as the event handler inside an anonymous function. So it's a it's an anonymous function inside an anonymous function. So document dot event listener dom content loaded. So and then here's our anonymous function. Once the dom content is loaded, here's our anonymous function that goes out and looks for the item with an ID of calculate using the dollar function, adds an, a click event listener to it. And when somebody does that click, it's going to run this anonymous function and whatever the code we put in there to process those entries. So we can nest it all inside of each other and make it nice and short. Now, if you're doing a lot of processing inside one of these, uh, I would suggest doing it this way and using an external function, not a, not a second anonymous function, uh, because your code can get quite complicated. But if you're only doing a couple lines, uh, it's perfectly okay to do it this way. And that's what happens a lot of times. All right. So we talked about anonymous functions and event handlers in this video. In the next video, we're going to look a little bit more about the event object, which is generated when one of these events happen.